Hey, so instead of just doing a big video once I get home and I can't remember what I thought of some of these books and some of these books I'll probably end up leaving at my dad's, I thought I'd film as I go along. So, day one, I've already read one book. <laughs> book in question is the third and final part in the Airhead trilogy by Meg Cowell and this one's called Runaway. Yeah, it's about 260 odd pages and I read that in a day. It was very quick to read and quite fun and it's been ages since I've read part one and two so I might have got more enjoyment out of the third part if I had more of a understanding and could remember parts one and two a lot better but it was one of those good ones that kind of subtly filled you in on what's happened in the previous books without making it glaring you obvious that that's what I was doing so I didn't feel as if I'd missed out just because I hadn't read books one and two for ages. I like how far some of the characters have come, um, Nikki especially she surprised me a lot and Lulu, I've always loved Lulu and she was just really cool. Um, the sort of romance bit, um, I was just like, oh, communication people is the key to any form of a relationship, sort yourself out. That bit annoyed me. But no, I think I'd give Runaway, I think I'd give it 3 out of 5 because I didn't love it but neither did I hate it and it was just a very quick, easy read. It's day 2 and I have read Book number two. This is I've Got Your Number by Sophie Kinsella and comes in about 380 odd pages. And yeah, I read that in a day. And it's only about four o'clock Spain time. It's one of those even by the blurb, you kind of like, oh, I clearly know who she's going to end up with at the end. But saying that, while it was very predictable, the last act did, that did surprise me, the last act of it. Some parts of that wasn't what I expected. But it's just like Sophie Kinsella's writing, although the start grated on me a bit because it's been a while since I've read any of her books and quite often her female characters are her main protagonists. They can be so ridiculous and flaky and just does what suits them that they can be quite annoying. So this one, first few chapters I was like, what are you doing? But I got into it, it's very quick, easy, fun read. I think I'd give it a 3 out of 5. If you like Sophie Kinsella's work then pick up this one as well. I do think you get to a stage with hers. So quite close to a set formula. In some ways it does sometimes seem that her female characters could swap and change between novels and it's just the fact that this one archetypal character has just been thrown into a different situation. But saying it, like I said, it was fun. So three out of five. Day six and I've completed book number three. Book number three in question is Angel Maker by Nick Harkway. This book follows two main characters and to start with you think they're unconnected or you don't just they just happen to know each other but really their whole histories of the, like their families and themselves are deeply connected. So you have Edie Bannister who is 80 odd years old and she was a sort of super spy in her teens and throughout her adult life and she is really cool. And then the other one is Joe Spork who is the son of a gangster and the grandson of a clockmaker. And he He's trying to not be a gangster like his dad and he's just trying to have a normal life but then he ends up sucked into this world when he kind of just fixes this clockwork book that turns out to be something that can either help or destroy the world and some people are trying to use it to destroy the world. You learn about Joe's childhood and learn about his father and grandfather at the same time as you go back and see Edie being a super spy and she's sort of been connected to this device. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's a bit slow to start, um, but about halfway through I really got into it and the last hundred pages or so were really fast paced and a lot of stuff was happening and it was one of those things that everything came together and you suddenly realised, oh my god, <laughs> it's gonna get done. I liked on the start of each chapter there was these three sort of small lines in italics under the chapter one, chapter two. And normally I don't really read the stuff at the start of a chapter if it's like a poem and stuff, I can't be bothered. But then as I went along I realised that this stuff was quite interesting because it was three kind of instants that would happen in the chapter. So when you kind of got to that instant the chapter you realised, oh we were all halfway through this chapter or near the end of this chapter. But the way it was written is quite funny. So I don't know if you can see there, but you've got the three things that would happen in this chapter. So you've got the the true origin of Fawn Parry, the hive and the flat at careful muse. So yeah, those three things would happen and it was sometimes just one word like escape 
and I just really thought that was quite interesting. I like a lot of the characters in this book. I quite like Joe. I understood why he didn't want to become a gangster like his dad. I wanted to more follow his grandfather's footsteps as a clockmaker. So he's got all these shady connections that he's never really used. And th those shady connections are really interesting. And then you got Edie and her with her pug. She's really cool both when you go back and see her as a teenager in her 20s as well as being when she's 80 odd. She is just totally knows what she's doing and even when she's in her 80s she can still kick some butt. I just like the way it's written it's kind of there's some really funny bits there's things that are said so simply like the outside narrator voice type thing but the way it's written makes it really funny and just you kind of look at it like how did that just happen <laughs> and uh, it just made me smile and I really kind of liked Nick Harkway's writing. I just really liked everybody in this book which is kind of rare for me because there's usually at least one character I don't like but I genuinely liked everybody in this book and I think it was well written and the whole world was really good because even though it's sort of set in contemporary London there's a secret society that's built things that were never built during the first or second world war well at least as far as I know and it's that sort of thing that is kind of a bit steampunk-esque in a way with these amazing mechanical things that are made. I think I'd give Angel Maker by Nick Harkway 4 out of 5. The reason I'm probably giving it 4 out of 5 instead of 5 is because, like I said, it did take me till halfway through to get through it. Not the first half was necessarily boring, but I didn't fall in love with it. So I was reading it and enjoying it, but it wasn't like a big passion. Um, whereas, yeah, it got to about the halfway mark and I was just like, it's kind of in some ways it was getting bigger and really more ridiculous but at the same time there was all these nuanced bits coming together and you're seeing all the threads coming together and I really like that. So yeah, 4 out of 5 for Angel Maker by Nick Harkaway. It's day 7 and I finished book number 4. It's Time Riders by Alex Scarrow, the first part in a series for young adults about three teenagers who are pulled from their times where they're about to die and are taught how to be time riders which is sort of a time travelling police force so if something interferes with the timeline they're supposed to figure out what went wrong and put the timeline back to normal. Three teenagers in question, there's a boy from 1912 who was on the Titanic, a girl from 2010 whose plane was about to crash and another girl who was from 2026 and was in a fire. I thought it was enjoyable, a very quick read. The chapters are ridiculously short, like some chapters, probably the longest chapter is only about eight pages. And sometimes I didn't really necessarily understand why they like, split up a chapter. The chapters would have where and when they were, so for instance we have 1963 Dallas, Texas, but then the following chapter would also be set in 1963 Dallas, Texas, so you're like, why are you bothering splitting that chapter up when you're still with the same people dealing with the same events? If you're bouncing forward to different points in time, or places then yeah I understand the chapter breaks but that seemed a bit pointless to me I'm like why cannot young adults or whatever age group this book is maybe aimed for maybe more like 10 to 12 year old can they not deal with chapters longer than five pages long that being said it's a very quick read reasonably enjoyable uh, the timeline that is contaminated in question in this book is one that no doubt is visited a lot in science fiction and generally what ifs is and in this case is what if Hitler won the Second World War. But I'm kind of slightly intrigued at what the next time travelling issue would be. So I may or may not pick up the next one in the series. I don't know how many there are in the series. But otherwise it's quite a good standalone novel. There's not really any sort of threads left hanging. So for a standalone first part of the series I thought it was quite good at setting everything up. I think I'd give Time Riders maybe 4 out of 5 because I quite like the alternate version of the world, like what if Hitler won the Second World War. I quite like how that was described and the difference that would make to the world in general. So we're on day number 10. Tomorrow morning I fly back to England and I am currently over halfway through book number five. That being the girl who kicked the horn at the place by Stay Glasson. Um, so yeah, over halfway through and I'm really enjoying it. I wish I'd read it sooner. I wish that I didn't have a year long gap between this one and the second one because so much is happening and there are loads of characters, some of which I remember quite well from a year ago but others not so much so that's been a bit of a struggle but so many things are happening that are just surprising me. There's plot twists that I'm just 
of like, whoa, what happened there? The writing's so good because I get such strong feelings about certain characters. There's a police officer named Fast or Faced or Fast, it's spelled F-A-S-T-E. But he is such a horrible man and he's really out to get Elizabeth. And I don't know what his problem is. He clean, he's, he's clearly such a huge misogynist asshole, and you get that, you get that feeling of, girl, I hate you. And there's other characters as well out to get her for no fault of her own, for like being born to who she was born to, and having a clever mind that can see what's going on around her. And I'm just really enjoying it. Um, I'm going to be reading this on the plane if I don't fall asleep, and also the train home. So, probably finish this in the next few days. I'm really enjoying it, and I wish I'd read it sooner. So yeah, at the moment this could quite easily get a 5 out of 5 really. And I've enjoyed everything I've read, some more than others. Hope you've enjoyed this compilation of reviews. Some reviews may have been longer or more in depth compared to others, but that may have been simply because I had stronger feelings about certain books compared to others. Do all the usual YouTube stuff of liking, commenting and subscribing, and I will see you next time.